Hello everyone. In this presentation, I will be continuing with the topic hedging strategies using futures. This is case study three, where I will be discussing short hedge by oil producing firm. Here, I have taken the example of Reliance, a well-known oil producing company of India. We will take a hypothetical situation to see how Reliance hedges its position and take short hedge position to minimize the risk. So before starting my presentation, I request all of you to please subscribe my channel and share it with your friends. In this hypothetical example, we will try to analyze why Reliance offers short hedge and try to find out the answer to our basic question. Is hedging profitable? We all know that Reliance Petroleum is an Indian petroleum company that specializes in oil and energy. It is owned by Mr. Mukesh Ambani of Reliance Industries Limited, which is one of the largest private sector companies of India. Reliance Petroleum Limited is the largest refinery in the world and it is listed in Bombay Stock Exchange and National Stock Exchange of India Limited. Reliance, being the largest refinery in the world, is in a continuous process of production and distribution of oil and petroleum not only in India but to the whole world. In this context, it has to face uncertainty. Uncertainty related to price and uncertainty related to market conditions. If we talk about the uncertainty regarding price, there can be two probabilities. Either oil price can go up or oil price can go down. If we talk about the uncertainty related to market, that means there should be a short market for oil produced by Reliance. Otherwise, Reliance has to make arrangement to the store of oil and petroleum it has produced. And that storage cost will further enhance the cost of production of Reliance and affect the profit margin of the company. Therefore, in order to minimize the risk and uncertainty related to market conditions, Reliance enters into a derivative market. It uses future market to hedge its risk. The objective is to take position that neutralizes the risk as far as possible. So Reliance take a short hedge position to protect itself from price fluctuation. Now the question is what is this short hedge? Short hedge is the hedge that involves a short position in future contracts. A short hedge is appropriate when the hedger already owns an asset and expect to sell it at some time in the future. So here Reliance can hedge against the falling crude oil price by taking up a short position in the crude oil futures market by locking future selling price for an ongoing production of crude oil that is only ready for sale sometimes in future. Therefore, Reliance enter into a short future contract on 30th September for the sale of 1 million barrel of oil at a promised price of $1,500 per barrel on 30th December. That means by signing a short future contract, Reliance has hedged its position with respect to the selling price three months prior to expiry. But at the time of expiry on 30th December, there can be two probabilities for oil prices. Probability number one, the spot price or the current market price on 30th December can increase up to $2,000 per barrel. Or probability number two, the spot price or the current market price on 30th December can go down to $800 per barrel. This means the Reliance has taken a shortage position in the 
future contract on 30th September 2022 and has satisfied all the five predefined conditions of future derivative. That are number one, underlying asset that is oil. Number two, the quantity that is 1 million barrel. Number three is the quality which is defined. Number four is the future price or lock-in price that is $1,500 per barrel. And number five is expiry or delivery which is promised on 30th December 2022. So this clearly shows that Reliance has satisfied or fulfilled all the five predefined conditions which are required for future derivative. Let us find out what happens to Reliance Profit when it takes a shortage position with the help of this timeline. We assume that Reliance take a short hedge position to sell the oil on 30th September 2022. And the contract was signed for 30th December 2022. That is expiry of the contract. From 30th September when the contract was signed and the time of expiry, there are three months to go. We all know that oil price are very fluctuating. It fluctuates with the change in the geopolitical conditions across the globe. So on 30th September, when the contract is signed, the spot price of oil, let's take it $1,000 per barrel. But we don't know what would be the spot price of oil on 30th December 2022 at this point of time so when we are standing on 30th september when the contract is signed the spot price for 30th december is not known therefore a contract is signed on the basis of the future price the future price is decided here it is 1500 dollar per barrel that is reliance decides to take shortage position to sell the oil at $1,500 per barrel at the time of expiry, that is 30th December. So this future price of $1,500 per barrel is also called as the lock-in price. That means whatever be the price, the spot price or the current market price, on 30th December 2022, on the time of expiry, Reliance has to sell the oil only at a future price, that is promised price, and that is the lock-in price decided at the time when the contract is signed for a shortage position by Reliance. So here you should be clear that when Reliance is signing a future contract, to sell its oil by taking a short hedge position on 30th September, the oil price on 30th December, the expiry of the contract is completely uncertain to the company. What would be the current market price or spot price is completely uncertain. Only the time will tell what would be the price on 30th December. So Reliance has complete uncertainty with respect to the spot price of 30th December. What would be the spot price and on what price it has to sell if it is not hedging its position in the future market? So instead of moving in this uncertainty with respect to price and market, Reliance opt for hedging. It hedges its position in the future market and take a short hedge. When the Reliance was signing a short hedge on 30th September. The spot price or a current market price was $1,000 per barrel. So after looking some historical movement in the price, it decided to fix the future price at $1,500 per barrel. And that is the lock-in price of the contract. Reliance has to sell the oil at the future price or the lock-in price of $1,500 per, per barrel on 30th December, irrespective of whatever be the spot price at the time of expiry. 
So only on 30th December, the spot price or the current market price will tell the position of Reliance. Is Reliance is in profit after hedging or hedging is giving loss to Reliance? Now suppose our expiry has come in and we are on 30th December 2022. On expiry, there can be two probabilities for the spot price or the current market price. Probability number one, spot price could have increased to $2,000 per barrel. In this situation, reliance would be in loss. Why? Because reliance had decided to sell the oil at $1,500 per barrel on 30th December and the spot price of 30th December moved up to $2,000 per barrel, which is a loss of $500 per barrel. If Reliance had not opted for future short hedge position, Reliance could have sold the oil at the open market, current market price of $2,000 per barrel. That means hedging can lead to worse outcome. But on the other hand, the second probability, suppose the oil price fell down to $800 per barrel. So in this situation, Reliance is having a huge profit of $700 per barrel. Why? Because Reliance has already signed a contract to sell oil at $1,500 per barrel. Whereas the market price on 30th December expiry fell down to $800 per barrel. So Reliance will sell on the basis of the contract that gives huge profit to Reliance. So that shows hedging can lead to a best outcome as well. So hedger of reliance would be congratulated for having the foresightedness to put the hedge in place. So from this example, we can see that hedging reduces the risk for the company. But at the same time, it can also lead to worse outcome as well. So from the above discussion, we can conclude that the importance of hedging is to look at the big picture while hedging. Of course, there is no guarantee that outcome with hedging would be better than outcome without hedging. But at the same time, we should also accept the fact that hedging helps to lock in future price of both the long hedge and the short hedge position, which helps in protecting the interest of the hedger from high volatility and uncertainty of the market and therefore helps the hedger to protect themselves from all the market uncertainties so that they can focus on their main activities for which they do have particular skill and expertise. So hedging has become a very common business strategy nowadays. Now the important question that comes here is how to make hedging profitable for a company and its shareholders. So before hedging, following points should be taken into consideration. Number one, all senior executives within the organizations must fully understand the nature of hedging before a hedging program is put in place. Number two, as we know that almost all the companies are public limited company, they have shareholders. So hedging strategies must be set up by the company's board of director and must clearly communicate it to both the company's management and to its shareholders. And number three, the most important, the hedger should always be able to identify the precise date in future when an asset would be brought or sold. The hedger was only then be able to use future contract to remove almost all the risk arising from the price of the asset on that date. After seeing the whole discussion, we can say that hedging can be very helpful for the players in the market, both for those who have taken a short position or for those who have taken a long position as well, as it helps to avoid risk and uncertainty associated with the market conditions. But at the same time, hedging is not simple and straightforward. It is associated with various problems related to asset, date of maturity, and problem with the closing out position of the contract. 
these three problems all together called as the basis risk so what is basis risk why it is so important and how to avoid the basis risk we will study the basis risk in the next presentation if you have any question on this presentation please put your question in the comment section and like and subscribe my channel to get further notification thank you so much